This is a re-TV mini doc. Kids who kill. Are they a product of their environment or are they simply born killers? This mini series, Killer Kids, will look at some of the most publicised cases of children 12 years and younger who have committed murder. Robert Sandifer, aged 11, Chicago, Illinois, USA, kill count one. I want to dedicate this one to Robert Yummy Sandifer. All of the young niggas that's in a rush to be This is the heartbreaking story of Robert Yummy Sandifer, who was born in Chicago, Illinois, on the 12th of March, 1983. This is definitely one of those cases that I want to cover in more detail and in this mini episode I'm just giving you a high level overview of the accepted story that's been put out there. There's so much more to this case that I want to talk about so be sure to check back for the full story and every side to it. Because he loved cookies. The thing is yummy because he loved cookies. Yeah. What was his favourite cookie? Chocolate chip. Looking at his bedroom walls covered in posters of Michael Jackson and Disney characters, he seemed like just a regular kid until he joined a gang known as Black Disciples. So we've been asking people about Robert. We went to the scene where he was killed. We talked to people about it. You were the first relative that I've spoken to or I've met. I just wanted to know what you think, what kind of guy he was. Hey, man, he was a little kid. He was a kid? Yeah. When you see him, how old was he? He was 11. 11. What was he like like when he was a little, little kid? He was a sweet little kid. And he wasn't violent. And he wasn't bad. If I was to see this young man on the street, I've never seen him, right? What, what would I see? What did he look like? Was he a tall fellow? Was he no, tall? he was this short. He was very short. To be his age, he was real short. Are you scared when you go outside? Sometimes. I'm not scared. When mm. does it work? At night. Where? Yeah, at night. Because that's when they all come out. shooting close to your house. Scared to get by the window. Yeah. They might shoot through the window and shoot you. Do you think Yummy ever did any shooting? I know the little boy. I, I took some time out with him. And he seemed kind of quiet. You know, he respects me. And um, he liked to be in with me. I never had a... I never had one minute um, a problem with that young man. I took him on a trip with me at the, at the police department. We had a program down there for the kids, you know, that I did some volunteer work at 5th District. Yummy didn't have a great childhood and suffered horrific abuse and by age two his body was covered in cigarette burns and bruises. His sister was once taken to the emergency room with burns on her genitals and their mother Lorena claimed that she had fallen on the radiator. The nurse however knew that this was impossible due to the severity and the position of her injuries. Yes, I think the child was lost. The child was from a, a home without the proper upbringing that he needed. He had, like I said, from 22 months old. How many babies, you know, 22 months old and got two brothers or a brother and sister or whatever, but he has two other siblings, three and five years old, and you get to take a 22-month baby to the hospital with cigarette burns on his butt? Please, that's, that's brutality on that child. And then you, the baby's left in the care of a three and a five-year-old. Where's the responsibility for that? What did happen to you? What do you know about what happened to you? Yummy or lived in a nice house and stuff like that. He was a every old boy. He got beat by his father. He had burn marks all over him, stuff like that. Did you ever hear him get beat? Did you ever see him get beat? Not in front of um outside or nothing. Like when they um get in trouble, um I think yeah I think they whoop him. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. Did he ever complain about it? Are the reports that we hear about him accurate about him being arrested, about the problems with him, about the abuse? Is any of that accurate? No problem. Are you surprised at all the attention? Yeah, really. Why? Why are you surprised? Because they blew it out of proportion. What do you, you, you say? You can't believe that this happened? Why? It's reality. It's happening all over every day. Nationwide. He was a nice kid as far as, you know, me and my son, the time that I got to know him, he was nice to me. Well, I'm not going to get myself upset about what the people think about me, you know, because I still got to let live and let live, you know, so I'm sorry about the people, you know, want to believe whatever you want to believe about, Rena Sandifer. 
When Yummy was three, he and his six siblings were removed from his abusive home and sent to live with their grandmother, Janie Fields, but her home wasn't any better. Fields was already raising her daughter's other four children along with five of her own. At one point or another, nearly all of her ten children and thirty grandchildren lived with her. The environment was far from a nurturing one and Yummy took to the streets to find a family. God have blessed me to be the mother of a lot of children, praise God. Somebody counted my grandchildren and great grand and says I had 106 all together. By aged eight, Yummy had given up on school and resorted to a life of crime. He began stealing cars and breaking into houses. During his childhood, Yummy was charged with 23 felonies and five misdemeanors, but due to his young age, he never spent a long time in jail. In June of 1994, Yummy was removed from his grandmother's house and was sent to a juvenile shelter after being caught driving a stolen car. Family services recommended that Yummy be placed in a long-term facility at a state because Illinois didn't have any facilities to handle youths at this age. A judge denied this request and sent him back to live with his grandmother and he soon resumed his life with the black disciples. He was a nice kid, you know. He had this like a long police record. I mean, started when he was nine years old. Yeah. 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 For the last two years, that was two years, must have been two years. Right? Well, I tried to talk to Robert during those times, you know. What did you say to him? I would ask him to, you know, get into some kind of boy club or is it any Boy Scouts or, you know, community centers and stuff like that. Because I have my other kids in community centers. What did he say? Oh, mom, don't worry about me? Yeah, something like that, yeah. I'll be all right, yeah. How long did you know him? About a year. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What was he like? Bad. Bad? Like, when you say bad, what do you mean? Fighting, stealing, breaking the people out. Did you ever see, like, the police coming to his house? Every other day. And on the 28th of August 1994, when Yummy was just 11 years old, he was ordered to take out a hit on a rival gang member. He had been attempting to kill that rival gang member by spraying bullets across the street and wound up opening fire on a group of youths and accidentally killed 14-year-old Siobhan Dean, who was just 10 yards away from her home at the time. I can't say who did it because I wasn't there. I cannot say something happened that I didn't see. That deep down in my heart, I love the little boy. And I do have deep sympathy for the, for the family. I do care about the family. Numerous people saw the murder and witnesses were able to identify the girl's killer as yummy. But after the gang got news of what he did, they were afraid that he would rat them out to the police once they found him. So senior gang members ordered the execution of yummy. Craig, 16, and Derek Hardaway, 14, spotted Yummy while he was waiting for a taxi and gave him no other choice but to get in the car with them. He was told to get into the back seat and lay face down and they drove him to a viaduct nine blocks away. Yummy walked a short distance into the tunnel and got on his knees when he was shot twice in the back of the head with a 25 caliber pistol. <laughs> It was an unusually chilly September night in 1994, as the body of an 11-year-old was loaded into the back of an ambulance. He had been shot twice in the back of the head, in a hit ordered by the leaders of the Black Disciples. The younger brother we knew that morning, before the older brother, that we didn't know nothing about him. Because he's being tried as an adult in his case. Why do people believe that these fellows are innocent? Everybody who knows them and who knows the family don't believe for one cotton picking second that they're capable of murder. When you found out that right. he was, he was uh, killed, right? What did you think? Um, I mean, it shocked me he shouldn't have got killed like that. Right? I mean, he didn't have to die the way he was killed, but that's the life you live. That's what happened. Did you know the little boy? Yeah, one of my friends, go to Vivi. He was your friend. What was he like? He was bad. Are these bad? Uh, yeah, was it? Did you say you say Robert Sanderford was bad, right? Yeah. It took me years to really admit and accept my role in it. What happened that night? Chaos. Craig was only 16 years old when his mugshot was plastered on TV, arrested for the murder of 11-year-old Robert Yummy Sanderford. His brother Derek, 14 at the time, was too young for his mugshot to be released. He was convicted of driving the getaway car. All three, Craig, 
Derek and Yummy, members of the same gang, chasing money, respect, and trying to make a name for themselves. For me, it was more like identity. It was more like, okay, I want to belong to something. I want to be a part of something. It's an addiction. It's a strong addiction, and it pulls you in quick. Chicago police quickly identified 11-year-old Robert Sanderfer as the gunman. That led to an intense three-day manhunt. Gang leaders decided that Robert needed to be silenced because he knew too much. So they ordered Craig to kill him. Why did Robert die? By means of not my control. And was it your life versus his life? Absolutely. You thought it was that simple as either you do this or you die. And that's how it always boils down. It's, it's not like any rigor world when you live in that lifestyle. So you're saying you had no other choice? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Derek refused to leave his brother's side. A lot of people don't know that, that he actually took me home. And I can just feel someone right. So when I asked him what's going on, and he told me everything, I refused to let him go by himself. I should have been more of a big brother to us. Get out, right? But at the time, that ain't the way you think. I'm still a minor. We still kiss. Hours after the murder, both brothers were in custody. And months later, they were convicted felons. Craig, 60 years for murder. Derek, 45 for driving the Gataway car. They were the only two ever tried in the case, even though they say others were involved. Why not tell? Because I was believing in the foolishness they was telling the gangs and that lifestyle. What did they tell you? How they gonna be there, support, take care of us, our families, everything. And? Nothing. Literally nothing. No letter, no contact, no money for me, my family, they need, no lawyer. Literally nothing. The autopsy showed the physical evidence of his hardened and abusive life with his tiny body covered in scars. It is important to remember that there are at least two victims in this story, 14-year-old Siobhan Dean, and although 11-year-old Robert may have pulled the trigger of the gun that killed Siobhan, he was a victim of horrific abuse from everyone around him. And one thing, she was a very, she was a very neat young lady. She loved to keep her hair pretty, and she loved to keep herself neat and clean. She was very polite. She was very polite to everybody. She was just that kind of young lady. I have a poem to say, children are dying rapidly, day after day. Maybe it's time we open our eyes and make a better place to stay. From the older generation to the young generation, please put down the guns. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, pretty please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Peace! You've been watching a ReTV Mini Doc.